As you can see, I am surrounded by a lot of color and this is the sweet spot in the market. Possibly the most relevant and the hottest segment right now, the subcompact SUV. Yes, everybody seems to want one and this is the new entrant, of course, the uh, Mahindra XUV300 has just driven in and so the customary thing to do always, let's get a comparison going. But before we do that, I want to make a point here. Now in the past, whenever you had a segment where somebody just brought in a new entrant, you could always say that, hey, you know what, it's a huge jump up, there's always a massive uh, excitement because every new product would do a lot better than the last one. But this is one space where all these products have been really, really solid in their own way. Think about it, the car that started it all in many ways, very credibly so, the Ford EcoSport. And then of course you've got the car that has the tag that's never going to be shaken, India's safest car, the first five-star rated, crash test rated car from India at Global NCAP, the Tata Nexon. In my book, possibly the best looking car out of these, I know that's unfair to say because, well, all of you might have different opinions in terms of what looks good, but the quintessential SUV shape lives with the Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza. It's also by far the best seller here. So, uh, of course, you can't ignore that. And then the new car that I've already mentioned. So, now that you know that each of them is solid, really, really very well designed, well built, and therefore very strong, which car deserves your attention? Of course, that's what we are here to find out. Now, if only there were four of me to do this really quickly. Oh, but hang on, we've got the magic of VFX. Oh, hang on. Don't worry, Siddharth, I got this. Let's go. From being a one-horse race just a few short years ago, the subcompact SUV segment has grown into a crowded set. The Mahindra XUV300 is the latest to join its own stablemates, the TUV300 and the even smaller KUV100. Beside the Ford EcoSport, the Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza and the Tata Nexon, of course. The older Mahindra models have a very specific demographic that they go after and so they don't really compete in this space. The Ford EcoSport has for long been our segment benchmark. Then there's that highest selling, most popular car, the Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza, the car with the better AMT and highest safety certification, the Tata Nexon. The Vitara Brezza does not have a petrol variant, while all the rest do. Maruti has been toying with introducing a petrol, but owing to incessant demand for the current offering and an overall capacity crunch, has had to delay it indefinitely. Now, since each of these cars is solid in its own way, let's compare the new car to each one. First up, the Ford EcoSport, which received its facelift at the end of 2017. The car still looks bold, modern and contemporary. The choice of engine includes the two petrols, 3-cylinder 1.0-litre or 1.5-litre. And then there's the 1.5-litre diesel. On the inside, both cars get well-appointed cabins. The plastic and fit on the EcoSport is better as is that touch screen. Possibly the single biggest USP of the car's cabin. Sync 3, better graphics and a more intuitive screen itself. The EcoSport scores big on this. But the XUV's got more features and gadgets on the whole, including dual zone AC. On the road is where the EcoSport's prowess has always stood tall though. Now the Ford EcoSport has always had it down pat when it came to handling. Nice and sporty, really nice tight steering which was pretty precise. And uh, you initially felt when you looked at the car that it would have a lot of body roll but it keeps that in check too. 
Add to that the uh, slightly sportier, edgier engine with the EcoBoost and things start to look up. They get a little fun too and you've got a credible automatic option as well. So the point is that this car seemed to be the performance package. When it came to handling, yes, there was no question about it. When it came to ride quality, you could argue that some others were also pretty good. But now on the XUV, I think it is ride quality that will probably be the big differentiator. Let's find out. And it is. The more car-like feel makes for very comfortable driving. The XUV suspension is also well-tuned and the car handles quite well too. Perhaps a bit less sporty than the EcoSport, but the adjustable stiffness on the steering kind of makes up for that in some small measure. Unlike some of the other Maruti designs which tried too hard, the A-Star, dare I say even the new Swift, there are no gimmicks on this design. It's a really clean, really well-executed design and that's why it's going to age really well. This car will always look contemporary because it is the quintessential SUV. Now, you might argue that Maruti played it too safe with that, but then that's where the twist comes in. Right from word go, you had customization options, you had black roof on some colors, you had the white on some colors, and of course, a whole host of other things that you could do with iCreate decals and a whole bunch of stuff on the inside. That's what keeps the appeal of this car sky high. Now, on the Tivoli, the car on which this uh, has been based. Yes, it was very gimmicky and that's one design I dare say will not age very well. The good part is they've taken some of that drama away from the face. You want to call it cheetah elements, that's fine, go ahead and do that. But it's basically just kind of muted it down and made it therefore a little more classical and typically SUV-like. The proportion does the rest and so yes, the styling on the XUV300 works too, but I have to say that one's the more attractive car. The Vitara Brezza, though, is the undisputed champion of the segment. Maruti has sold 80,745 Vitara Brezzas in the last six months. That includes January 2019. Tata sold 27,116 Nexons in the same period. Ford sold 21,690 EcoSports. And Mahindra managed only 9,432 units of the TUV 300. So you can see why there was a need for the XUV 300, right? The XUV comes across as a segment higher product in terms of fit, finish, features, equipment and build. Yet, one cannot ignore the ride height, stance and efficiency of the Vitara Brezza. And its black alloy wheels at the top end are pretty cool. Its 24.3 km per litre mileage is higher than what's expected on the XUV's diesel, which is about 21 km per litre. But the XUV is better to drive and more confident in its cornering and high-speed cruising. Tata Nexon has been the surprise package in so many ways. It has both fuel types, AMT on both as well, and comes loaded with a fair number of features. Yes, the car also has a few gimmicks up its sleeves, including the dial that allows you to drive in three different drive modes. Its boot is generous and overall the car looks urban, pretty and impressive, and it's priced well too. Who would have thought I would be saying this about a Tata car, but I'm glad I get to say it. The Nexon's layout in terms of the design, the materials and also the finishes, not necessarily the plastic quality, is really refreshing. It looks so different. It really stands out. I would have liked a slightly nicer, maybe bigger screen. Yes, I'll give you that. But the touchscreen itself works quite well. And, uh, you know, you get all the 
basic things that now everybody wants from a touch screen, including Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So you've got all of that. Instruments, again, could have been a little bit snazzier and younger and hipper. That you do get on some of the other cars. But the seats, really well designed, nicely contoured, and what a classy, understated print too, which never happens really at this price point. So I have to say, this cabin gives me that young, vibrant sort of a feel that you don't always get from the others. But the good part with the XUV is that uh, it kind of plays not on young, not on vibrant, but on classy, sophisticated, and upmarket. And yes, as I've already said, the XUV 300 has many first-in-segment features, seven airbags and front parking sensors, disc brakes on all wheels, seat belt reminders for all passengers with three-point seat belts for all as well, and a load more. Most of that is at the top end, of course. And we have no crash test rating for this car, but given its platform and build, we expect a good performance. That said, the Vitara Brezza already has four stars, and the Nexon has five from Global NCAP. The Nexon's AMT is the best of the lot, smoothest shifts and quickest response. Interesting fact, the Vitara Brezza, Nexon and now the XUV300 will all have the same supplier for the AMT, Magneti Marelli. Ford, of course, uses a proper automatic, only on the 1.5 petrol though. And now a look at the prices for all cars. The Echo Sport has a slew of variants that are priced between 7,82,000 and 11,89,000 rupees. The Vitara Brezza starts at 7,67,000 for the base LDI and goes all the way to 10,64,000 for the two-tone ZDI Plus AMT variant. The Nexon has the most attractive prices. The base petrol manual starts at 6,36,000 while the diesel XZA Plus top trim with dual tone roof and AMT is priced at 10,80,000 rupees. That puts the XUV300 a small notch higher. Prices start at 7,90,000 for the petrol W4 and go all the way to 11,99,000 for the W8 with the option pack on the diesel. But please keep in mind the AMT variants will only add to these prices when they arrive later this year. All right, so now you know everything, which means it's down to the verdict. And well, it is that kind of season right now where people want to hear verdicts, isn't it? So let me not sort of prolong this any longer. The natural assumption is that any new car that comes in tries to better what the existing players are doing and which is why the new car should always win a shootout. Hasn't always been the case when it comes to our shootouts because we try and give you a more practical, pragmatic view and which is why when it comes to performance, you know, sporty handling, nice ride quality, the Echo Sports always kind of cornered that end of the market and now with its uh, S and Signature versions as well, it continues to do so. It still has the EcoBoost engine as well. So it's kind of got that area still as its very, very strong USP. The good news is that the two engines here that we have now with the XUV, well, they kind of give you that as well in some ways because uh, highest torque in the segment and really nice smooth performance as we've already told you. Safety, yes, has become the buzzword when it comes to the Nexon. But it's not just about that. The cabin layout, very trendy, very young, very vibrant. And then for what it's worth, you've got a few gimmicks like the three driving modes. Now you have three steering modes on the XUV, so you don't have the driving modes. But uh, when it comes to the interior layout, it's very swanky, it's very upmarket. It's certainly a bit of a class apart kind of an experience. And so, yes, it does that too. And of course, the best seller, the mighty Vitara Brezza, Regardless of what I say here today, we'll continue to sell in massive numbers, no doubt, more than 10,000, 11, maybe 12,000 a month. So, what is the point of that? Well, here's the thing. Even if you think that this car is going to get a little bit jaded, a little long in the tooth, don't forget, Maruti still has to launch the petrol version of this car. 
there's still a lot more that can happen with the Vitara Brezza. So don't count it out in any regard just yet. But having said that, I thought this is the best looking of the lot because it looks typically like an SUV. But a lot of people like the looks because of the modern contemporary elements. And yes, okay, the Cheetah bits on the XUV300 as well. So it also does something for many people on styling. And which is why the fact that it can actually counter the strong USPs of all these cars and not just come out a little bit ahead, it manages to, of course, very keenly take this entire shootout. But don't just take my word for it. So guys, do you agree? Uh, yes, I absolutely do. Except for the fact that this doesn't get an automatic. Ah, yes. No automatic. One chink in its armor for sure. But the good news is we are told that should happen by the middle of the year.